Today we're at Dandy Entrance doing some LS dyno testing and with Joel from Harrop. Joel, can you tell us a bit about what we're going to be testing today? Sure. Today we're testing Harrop's uh, 2650. It's got an Eaton rotating group. Uh, the rotating group is actually out of the C7 Corvette uh, running the LT5 engine. It's the largest rotating group that uh, Eaton make and uh, today we're hoping to uh, see some figures in excess of a thousand horsepower on this uh, 427. Yep, and the engine was built by Dandy Engines? Engine built here by Dandy Engines. It's a cast iron block, aftermarket block, Rodex heads again aftermarket, reasonable size cam, um, and it's going into a, what will be a fairly exciting HQ Holden streetcar. Yep, yep. Now I believe it's on the FuelTech EFI system and it's running E85, is that correct? That's correct, yes. Yeah. So E85 today, uh, obviously the higher octane enables us to really push compression and boost to get the absolute most out of everything. Awesome, well, let's get into it. The aim of today's dyno session is to test an array of modifications and parts in conjunction with the Harrop TBS 2650 supercharger. Arguably, the 1 7 8 inch dyno headers are not ideal for this combination, but will suffice. For our baseline test, the positive displacement front drive front inlet 2650 is fitted with a 90mm LS2 throttle body and a 65mm top pulley made it to Harrop's 8PK belt drive wrap that should result in around 15 psi boost. The intercooler is also a closed system. Positive displacement V8 engines are extremely tractable on the street, producing around 600 foot-pound of torque at just 2500 rpm. Switching to a larger 102mm throttle body is a common upgrade on a positive displacement supercharger. This should see an increase in power. Okay, so we've got some good baselines now on the standard 2650. Uh, and now we're going to put our modified 2650 with the uh, custom porting on the intake on and see what gains we get. All the boost. We've seen a lot of talk online about supercharger porting, so it'll be good to see some real world results. Harrop has brought along an additional head unit complete with inlet porting. Once again, the supercharger head unit is back off, this time to fit a manifold spacer plate that lifts the supercharger off the manifold. So you're just fitting that spacer plate, Joel, what's the theory behind that? So the spacer plate basically gives us a bigger plenum area underneath the supercharger. Um, a little bit more room under the supercharger means the air's got a little bit more time to disperse and um, slow down, which is going to help it get through the core. In high horsepower applications, Harrop suggests switching to an LSA style belt drive kit, which in short moves the supercharger to its own belt path. Yeah, we can up, up this to full dinner plate and then it enables us to run a 75 here and have the same roll Which speed is just a happy R. So this is your choice. Harrop's own version of the LSA? Yeah, fundamentally. Fundamentally, drive? Yep. Yep. And what's the advantage of running the LSA drive? So the LSA, the LSA drive's got a couple of advantages. The, the belt is shorter, which is of a benefit, um, but also it enables us to run a much bigger crank pulley, which means that we can run a larger supercharger pulley, and there, that means we're less likely to have belt slip.
It was obvious that the engine would see small power gains by utilising a channelled air path rather than the open throttle body. So with that in mind, a Harrop over the radiator intake was fitted and tested. So I've just finished with the dyno session. This engine's making a thousand plus horsepower and a thousand plus foot pounds. Can you just tell us a little bit about what's inside this LS? It's pretty much all off the shelf. How many cubes is the engine? 427 cube. 27, and what crank's in it? The crank is a um, Kelly's crank. Kelly's crank, and um, I think they're Brodex heads? Brodex um, LS7 heads. What sort of compression's in it? 10 to 1. Okay, so she's very streetable. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the guys were saying we could probably make a bit more power if you up the comp. The owner had a, a thousand horsepower in mind and that's mm -hmm. what we've done. Mm -hmm. Camshafts are roller hydraulic, 237, 248, okay. and 50 yep. on a 117. The, the blocks are LS Next, SHP block. Yeah, cast iron. Cast iron. So they're not a six bolt, they've still got... They're a four bolt. Splayed type cap, yeah. They haven't got the cross bolts, Yeah. but much stronger much than stronger the factory. Than standard, yeah. Yeah. It, it does have the extra stud holes and a set of... Um, Comedic head gaskets. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and this is a bit different. This one's got drive by wire, uh, electronic throttle, mm -hmm. it's on the fuel tech. A lot of guys run the jam computers, but today we've seen um gives you a bit more flexibility over the tuning and, and that sort of thing. Everything in this engine is off the shelf. Off there's the shelf not, parts. There's, nothing, no, there's nothing exotic in it, no, is there? No. Just a really good a thousand horsepower. I mean a lot of people say it makes a thousand horsepower, but this makes so much torque. Mm. The dyno is actually struggling today to um Mm -hmm. Hold well, it. Hold it. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I think it was all 6,500. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the runs are only 6,200. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome package. Mm -hmm. This is just going to uh, melt tyres on the street. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, mate? Just going to be a handful? Oh, yeah. I'm quite shitting myself. <laughs> <laughs>